Hi everybody, it's Mr. Fuller here. Today I'm going to show you a handy little strategy called part, part, whole. The idea behind doing it in a video is that if you do get stuck, you can rewind, watch things again, and hopefully you will understand better the second time around. If you still don't understand, feel free to get in touch with me and I will help you out. Now the part, part, whole strategy is a really easy way to understand the link between addition, which is adding, or plus, and subtraction, which is takeaway or minus. Now a lot of you will be aware of this link, but sometimes forget about it when you're coming to harder questions. So today I'm going to demonstrate this using a few easy questions and then give you a chance to practice. Now there are actually six different types of adding and subtracting questions. You've probably seen all of these. The first one is the one you see most often, which is where you have two parts and you're adding them up to get the total. 5 plus 3 equals something. You might know the answer to that already. But there are others, like this one. 8 plus something equals 18. Or this one, where you don't know the starting number. Something plus 9 equals 17. And it's the same for takeaways. So 9 subtract 4 equals something. Here's one where we don't know what the change is. It's 19, and then we're taking away something, and that leaves us with 12. And this one, where we don't know the starting number. Something take away 8 equals 4. Now, part, part, whole diagrams can help us to understand all six types of questions. So I'm going to show you six examples, one of each. Let's start with the very simple ones. Whenever we've got an adding question, we can see it as two parts that add up to give us a whole or a total. So if I have this number sentence, 5 plus 3, there's two parts. There's a 5 and there's a 3 and they're combining to give us a total, which is 8. Easy. We can use this same part, part, whole combination when we don't know the amount that's being added. So in this question it's 8 add something equals 18. Now we know that the whole, the total, is going to be 18. And we know the two parts, 8 and this other part which is the one that we're trying to find. Here's the interesting bit. We actually solve this problem using takeaway, subtraction. Because we know that if we take away 8, it'll leave us the thing that we're looking for. And you can see that quite clearly with the part, part, whole diagram. When we take away the 8, all that's left is the question mark, the number that we're trying to find. So, by solving this problem, 18 take 8, we get 10. Now, with little numbers, it's easy. You can do these in your head. But we can use exactly the same process for big numbers. Let me give you an example. Oops. Oh, just going back to our original. 8 plus 10 equals 18. So let's have a go with big numbers. This is exactly the same sum as before, except that instead of using little numbers, I'm now using big numbers. As before, I've got a total. 1,243, and I've got two parts, 346, which I know, and the blue part, which I'm trying to solve. By turning it into a takeaway sum, I put the question mark at the end, which is where I want the question mark to be. I can take away the 346, and that'll leave me with the bit that I'm looking for, the question mark. This sum I can now solve either using a calculator or using a piece of paper. Or if I'm super clever, I could maybe even do it in my head. I can't. I'll need a piece of paper. And using a piece of paper, I can find that the part that I'm looking for is 897. So using takeaway subtraction to solve an addition problem. Here's the third type. Here, we don't know the starting amount. It's something plus 9 equals 17. So we know that the total is going to be 17, the whole. 
and we know the two parts. Question mark and nine. Again, we want to solve it so that the question mark is at the end. So we have to rearrange it. We turn it from a, an addition problem into a subtraction problem, a takeaway. The way we do this is by starting with the whole, 17, taking away the 9, and that'll leave us with the thing that we're looking for. By doing that sum, 17 take 9, we come up with the answer, which is 8. Again, it's fairly easy with small numbers, but this strategy works exactly the same no matter how big the number is. Let's have a look at some subtraction problems. The interesting thing about subtraction problems is that the first number in the number sentence will always be your whole, because we always take away the parts from the whole. So 9 take away 4 equals something. 9 must be the whole, because it comes first. Then we take away one of the parts, 4, and that leaves us with the other part that we're looking for. Take away that 4, and we can work out that the answer is going to be 5. Fairly straightforward. But it's less straightforward when the thing that we're looking for is in the middle. Here, we know that the whole is 19, and we're taking away something to leave us with 12. So the whole is 19. Take away one of the parts, leaves us with 12. Now, to solve this, we want that question mark to be at the end of the sentence. The way that we do this is by rearranging. We do 19 take away the thing that we know. We take away the 12. As you can see, when we take away the 12, it leaves us with the red question mark. Now that we've got the question mark at the end of the number sentence, it's easy. 19 take away 12 equals 7. And our last example. Here, we don't know our starting point. It's something, take away 8 equals 4. Now remember, with take away or subtraction, the whole is always at the start. So on this occasion, the whole is what we're trying to find. We know the two parts. The two parts are 8 and 4. So to solve this subtraction problem, we actually need to do some addition. 8 plus 4 equals the number that we're looking for, which of course is 12. So, here's what I hope you've learnt from this little session on part, part, whole. First, sometimes we have to use subtraction or takeaway to solve addition problems. Equally, sometimes we have to use addition to solve subtraction problems. They're opposites, so using one can help us solve the other. And a part-part-whole diagram will help us know which operation to use. Have a go at the examples now, and if you have any queries, let us know and we'll help you out. If you need to go back and re-watch the video as many times as you need to, feel free.